Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County Forum for candidates for Snohomish County Executive. I'm Karen Madsen, member of the League. This forum is being live streamed to our League YouTube channel. To those watching us live, thank you for joining us. A recording of the forum will be available on this same YouTube channel for later viewing. We refer to these primary forums as virtual doorbelling. We'll ask a few of the kinds of questions you might ask of a candidate who came to your door designed to give you a clear idea of each candidate's experience and the issues she or he believes are important to address. Let me provide some background on this particular position. The county executive is tasked with ensuring efficient, effective, and economical administration in accordance with all applicable laws. Responsibilities include these. The county executive supervises executive departments, administers ordinances and state statutes within the county, presents an annual statement of governmental affairs of the county to the council, prepares the proposed budget and budget message, prepares capital improvement plans, and nominates members of county boards and commissions. Candidates for county exe executive in the upcoming election are Christopher Garnett, Bob Hagland, and Dave Summers. The League thanks all the candidates for running for office, for their willingness to serve the community if elected, and for participating in this forum this evening. It's the policy of the League to be nonpartisan. Therefore, we neither endorse nor oppose these or any other candidates or parties. We do take positions on issues which we've studied and on which we've reached consensus. The rules for participation were sent ahead of time to all candidates and they have agreed to engage in respectful communication throughout the forum. During the question and answer period, I'll pose the questions and I'll steer, clearly state the amount of time allowed for each answer. We're using a countdown timer visible to all candidates and time limits on answers will be strictly enforced. I'll change the starting order for each question, alternating candidates in the starting position to ensure a fair sequence. The order for the first question will be Mr. Hagland, then Mr. Garnett, and finally, Mr. Summers. With that, let's begin. Candidates will have two minutes to respond to this first question. Mr. Hagland, your first question is, if elected, what will be your top priorities? Please explain why you're focusing on these issues. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I very much appreciate it. Um, so my top priorities are really simple. They all revolve around one, one overarching theme is returning government to the role of public servant uh, rather than um, uh, it's, it's a role it has right now where it tends to, to um, wander from that responsibility to serve um, uh, special interests a little bit more than it should, um, serves um, groups rather than, than the citizens at large. And that's something that I really wanna focus on overall. It's the overarching theme. Uh, one of the things that's, that, that strikes me is that uh, I grew up in Everett. I was born and raised in Everett, as was my wife. Um, Everett's not the city it used to be. It's um, quite depressing, actually, frankly, to um, see what's going on within the city. Now, I know that's, that some people would say it's a city problem, but really this is a problem that's been going on throughout the county. It's this issue of homelessness, hopelessness, drug addiction. Um, we even had a, um, an event uh, with the, the party organization that we Posted where instead of uh, talking about uh, partisan issues like we usually do, we focused on on that issue alone of the the, the uh, issue of drug addiction and hopelessness. I think that needs to to be addressed uh, firmly and decisively. We've had a lot of time to work work on plans. Uh, years uh, this has been an ongoing thing. It's a chronic problem. You know, uh, it's something that needs resolution. It's it's inhumane to leave uh, the situation the way it is. It's bad for our community as a whole and bad for those individuals. There's a real human being suffering and that really concerns me deeply and breaks my heart. Um, it, it, as far as uh, uh, the other uh, top issues, that one is it, it, uh, also uh, goes toward public safety. Uh, public safety has become an issue where we've had a lot of this defund the police mentality uh, still exists within county government and something that, uh, I, however I don't blame the incumbent for, is something that, that I think strong leadership is, is needed to, uh, to deal with. And on top of that, just overall affordability of quality of life that needs to be addressed directly and affirmatively. 
Thank you, Mr. Garnett, your response? Yeah, uh, thank, thank you for having me. The um, first priority that, that I would like to address is the issue of public safety in and around Snohomish County. Um, we have rising crime, um, homelessness issues, addiction, as Bob said. Um, my second priority in Snohomish County would be the housing affordability for renters and homeowners alike. Um, the current uh, agenda of cities and counties is to kind of take over for developers and landlords and people who have you know become experts in their field and instead try to uh, take that that job on and create their own affordable housing communities um third priority would be focusing on the mental health crisis and for me these top three priorities i would see as uh being almost one in the same in a lot of areas so housing affordability mental health crisis public safety um We've all been in Everett, and I think that everyone can agree that there's there's a crisis currently at hand. And um, I think that Snohomish County has the resources to handle the issues that we have, and we just need to start collaborating with each other and uh, coming up with programs that are actually going to function and and benefit the community as a whole. My wife is a uh, community mental health therapist in Everett, and so we see um, we see this issue from from the bottom up, from the youth up until you know uh, adults here that can't afford a home are living in in this kind of hopeless post COVID life, and um, I think that we can do better as a county to to help the communities and the people in it. Thank you, Mr. Summers. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for hosting the forum. Yes, uh, I've got way more priorities and issues uh, than we could talk about in two minutes. Every department under my control has priorities for the coming four years, but I do want to speak to public safety, as has already been mentioned. I think we're in violent agreement about that one. I also want to talk about recovery uh, and jobs and training and support for our families, and the third one is environment and quality of life. On uh, the public safety issue, we've been uh, working for a number of years and we've just reinvigorated what I call my multi-agency committee, which includes the cities, our first responders, health district and health department now, um, uh, nonprofits and all kinds of service providers to collaboratively work together and plan together to address this issue. We have been working on it. It's gotten much, much worse. We started off in opioids with opioids before the pandemic, and now we're into fentanyl, and there's another drug headed our way uh, that's in other parts of the country, which is called Trank, which is even worse than fentanyl. So the nature of the problem has increased, but I believe in a compassionate approach, helping people with their underlying problems that gets them into addiction, but I also uh, very much support a law enforcement approach. I think law enforcement uh, is essential to keep our communities and our streets safe. And we need to start building, frankly, treatment facilities in our um, uh, law enforcement facilities for those people that need to be uh, uh, brought under the law enforcement wing. Those that want help, we are stand ready to help them. We've acquired housing to get them shelter and support services to get them out of addiction. Um, the second one is uh, job training and really recovery. We've built very strong programs to uh, bring workers into the county, retrain workers, and support our businesses, uh, and also with uh, funding for child care. Child care is a real restriction with child care costing as much as um, a college tuition these days. And environment, I could talk for a long time on that, but my time is out. So, Thank you, Mr. Summers. Candidates will have 90 seconds for each of the next two questions. Timer, if you would be good enough to adjust the clock, please. Mr. Garnett, you will lead off here. And the question is, what qualifications and experience make you a good choice to address these issues? Sure. Um, so what I bring to the table is 15 years of experience in managing communities in and around Snohomish County. Um, also the the surrounding counties as well. So these are communities of people in all all walks of life, each one individual. Um, some that face a lot of the issues that we have uh, at hand in Snohomish County right now. Um, I have over a decade of successful entrepreneurial experience. I've been been a business owner for the last last 
10 years in, in multiple businesses. Um, and I think that having, having on the ground experience um, and understanding the communities and the areas that we have in and around Snohomish County individually is, is probably the most important thing that a, um, that an executive really, really can have in their back pocket. I think we're here to serve the people and in order to serve the people, really, we have to, we have to understand them, not as, not as a whole, not as this uh, great big picture, but instead individually and what it is that people are going through. Um, in addition to that, as I said before, my wife's in community mental health. I often joke that I went through school with her three years of trauma counseling um, school. And I think that, that that's given me a, a perspective that not many have. Thank you, Mr. Summers. Yes, thank you. Um, well, uh, as you mentioned, I've been uh, a county executive for now for eight years. I was elected four times to the county council, so I've been serving uh, for county government for quite some time. I built a, an amazing team. It's a bipartisan team of good, strong people. The role of the executive is really to build a team uh, at, at the county, and uh, we've done that, and I think we've been extremely effective. And again, it's bipartisan. Everyone is focused on public service. My instructions to everybody is we are a community service organization we serve the public the public is our uh, boss and so that's the uh, frame we work under and i think we do that we're working also to improve the efficiency of government we're updating our systems we're working to outreach to communities so they know what services uh, the county can provide i also view the county as being a troubleshooter for people that have issues that they need resolution on so we try to be very much proactive and supportive of our public i also like to bring a fact-driven data-driven approach to county government my background in science really brings me to that, that uh, to make a decision, you need to listen more than you talk, gather data, gather information, talk to as many people as you can, understand the solution, and then move forward with a resolution that's good for the entire community. And I think we've built a government that has demonstrated that they can do that. Mr. Hagland, your thoughts? So oh, my experience, um, uh, spans more than four decades, uh, in, mostly in the IT field, but a lot of it in, in the healthcare uh, industry. I work in healthcare data science. Uh, we are very much uh, data-driven also as far as uh, uh, looking at, at what provides the best outcomes for individuals. Uh, we also, uh, because we are tasked with constantly uh, keeping costs under control and providing the best care possible at the lowest cost so we can we can improve the quality of medicine for everyone. That's something that that um, has really been a uh, transformative as far as uh, uh, me working in that area, having a, a true understanding of, of, of what the impacts are on people who are less fortunate. As far as my background, uh, I've, I've spent, uh, as I said, four decades uh, in the consulting industry, um, in IT. Uh, the things we do is one of my um, senior managers in the past said that we don't get the healthy ones. We work a lot on turnarounds fixing things that are, are broken, getting people to work together that typically haven't worked together. That's something that, that has uh, given me the ability to work in, the, uh, in, in party politics to try and get people much more focused on public service, uh, a lot more like Scoop Jackson and, and Reagan of the past, a lot less of the partisan bickering. Been very successful in that locally and, and, and working statewide on that. I, I feel that type of thing, the, the ability to work with, with um, shall we say, difficult situations, team building and a depth of experience over the years qualifies me very much to do this job. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Summers, you're first up on this question with 90 seconds for your response. Please tell us about your leadership style. What values are of greatest importance to you? Please give a brief example that demonstrates this. Thank you. Well, I think the word that best uh, describes my style is collaboration. All the problems and issues and challenges we face as a county and its communities uh, span across the county government into cities. 
uh, into special districts, school districts, other counties, uh, the, the entire region, and in the case of fentanyl and drugs, the, the entire nation, frankly. So we focus very much on collaboration. Examples of that, we established the multi-agency committee before the pandemic to deal with opioids, again, bringing in other cities, uh, fire districts, uh, police agencies to address that collaboratively. I use an emergency management framework to bring everybody together to decide how we're going to approach that problem. Did the same with our housing uh, affordability issues. It created a regional task force, which included cities, uh, housing providers, planners, and others to talk about the nature of the housing affordability crisis. Frankly, it's driving a lot of our issues. The more unaffordable housing uh, is, the more people we have on the street, and it leads to other issues that we've already talked about. So again, a multi-agency regional approach uh, to that. And on opioids, you know, frankly, uh, again, my human services department has teamed up with the sheriff's office to create the office of neighborhoods where we have law enforcement and human services workers working together uh, to uh, deal with folks that are on street and facing a crisis. And Thank you very much. Mr. Haglin. So, um, actually, I'll agree with some of uh, what Mr. Summer said about uh, collaboration. I feel very strongly in building teams that, that work together and uh, where they traditionally haven't worked together, uh, bring them to, uh, bring them into a new environment. But one of the things I would add into the, uh, where they can uh, uh, learn to collaborate a lot more, that's, that, that's how we get things done as so we work together. Being a team, whether it's, uh, it's government or it's uh, partnering with the private sector, or just frankly, just encouraging the public. That's one of the big things the leadership in this type of role needs to do is to be out there encouraging the public to come along uh, and, and, and join with us and be open-minded to, to the new ideas and, and changes. Uh, government can't solve everything. That, that's something government just doesn't do well. Government is essentially a fallback when the community itself fails, either, either people individually or in, in many cases, the private sector doesn't, uh, doesn't deliver, things devolve to government. We should be out in front of that. We should be much more proactive. And frankly, I, I think one of the things that, that I see, need to, to emphasize a lot more is that we need to be ready, though, to take a leadership position and, uh, and make course corrections, even if we have to pull the plug and start over on things with a fresh set of ideas, some fresh set, uh, teams. That's what we need to do when things are not succeeding. We've seen a lot of things where there's been a ton of effort, you know, you know millions of dollars, uh, thousands and thousands of hours of work put in, and we don't have the results. We need to focus on results and serve the committee better. And Mr. Garnett. Um, when I first thought about uh, this question, the word collaboration came to mind as well. So I'm, I'm glad that we're all in agreement. I would say um, in addition to collaboration, um, my leadership style in business and, and um, what I would bring to this position is to really identify experts those with great ideas and pair them with those that can execute the vision um i aim to equip and encourage uh, anybody that i'm leading and i know that snohomish county has the resources but we also have the people so we have we have experts um maybe not those in leadership positions and they can be they can be identified and placed there when I look at any problem, I like to get as granular as I possibly could. So understand from um, one, one end of the issue to the other, for instance, with the housing affordability, that's a, it's not just renters, it's homeowners. It's not just um, counties, it's in cities, it's the, uh, the landlords, the real estate investors. And um, my, my goal would be to Find those that are experts in the small parts of each of these issues and bring them in for collaboration so we can start solving some of these problems. Thank you very much. Timer, please note that the candidates will have 60 seconds for our final question, and it is this. Mr. Hagland will lead off. Please tell us something about your life experience that might surprise or intrigue voters. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Something about my life experience that might surprising and intrigue people is, um, I, I guess the, the the thing is that I grew up in Everett. Most of my friends are 
frankly, are conservative Democrats. I don't believe strongly in partisanship, but I, I chose, um, you know, once um, Scoop Jackson passed away in my um, senior year in high school, and I lost that political and public service mentor, I, I, I saw that, um, that Reagan encouraged people and the people of our state agreed uh, in the, the second time on the, the ballot and uh, voted to support the president then too. I think what people liked about this two, two men is not only did they, they bring uh, a strong spirit of public service, but they also did have ambition. Jackson ran for president a couple of times, um, didn't do so well, but, but they had ambition, but, the, but built in deep down inside is a heart of public service. That's something that, that in partisan leadership we're not seen, and I'm trying to bring that to the Republican Party. Thank you, Mr. Garnett. Okay. Um, so something I think that um, I would like voters to know is that um, I grew up in a in a family that um, were career Boeing. We've been in this area all of my life and by um being being a, a child of someone who's going to eventually retire from boeing we've been kind of at the mercy of a lot of things in this county and um just from a young age i have been involved in the politics of this area and been intrigued by them and the way that they've affected my life and uh my family's life growing up I've been they've been immense so my heart's here and my heart's uh here for the people of of Snohomish County and the, the communities that that uh make make the county what it is thank you and with the last word Mr Summers yeah thank you a couple of things I, I mentioned one is I come from a science background so I like to apply a uh, scientific principle to problem solving, bringing facts to, to bear on an issue. Uh, the second one is I, I live in unincorporated county. I'm the first county executive that doesn't live within a city. So I very much understand and appreciate rural issues, uh, but I'm also a bit of a student of urbanism and, and what makes great cities and great places to live. And I think a good environment uh, in the county creates the strong business climate and, and quality of life we have here. Um, the third thing is I, I recently lost my brother to fentanyl. And uh, I understand his struggles uh, that really started at, at a very young age. He was born into a family. My mom was descending into alcoholism. So there was childhood trauma. And behind most of these people that we see in addiction, and only about 40% are actually on the street. The other 60% are actually housed, have underlying trauma. So we need to deal with them with compassion, help them, but also- Thank you so much, Mr. Summers. I appreciate it. Yeah. The League appreciates these candidates for joining us and for running for office. A recording of this forum and others will be available on the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County website and YouTube channel. Find links at lwvsnoho.org. We, we encourage you to explore additional information about these and about all the candidates. The Snohomish County voter pamphlets were mailed to residences starting July 12th. Primary election ballots will be mailed starting July 13th. Election day is August 1st. Please be a voter. Thank you to our whole candidate league forum. Tonight, our backup moderator is Vicki Roberts-Gassler. Timer is Laura Dangell. Coordinator and backup timer is Phyllis Bush. Tech host, Karen Crowley. And special thanks to Dave Moon and Carissa Weichel and all the Sultan School students at TurkPride.tv who made this live stream possible. And of course, thank you to all of you for joining us. This concludes our candidate forum.